Uh, good afternoon or good evening and welcome to today's USD virtual networking event. Today's session is hosted by the University of San Diego's Alumni Association and the Career Development Center. My name is Kara Marsh Profit and I am the Director of Alumni Operations and Engagement for USD's Office of Alumni Relations. A big shout out and welcome to my fellow USD alumni and, other, and another welcome uh, to the current USD students who have joined us today. Go Toreros! This virtual event is part of our vibrant Torero Trek program, which connects students to employers and alumni. Typically held in person and around the country, Treks bring the USD family together to tighten our bonds as Toreros. Without further ado, I would like to introduce today's facilitator, Robin Darman. Robin, I'd like to invite you to turn your camera on as I share a little bit about you. There you are. Uh, Robin is the Senior Director at, of the University of San Diego's Career Development Center. She joined our USD team in 2013, and boy, are we lucky to have her. Her entire career has been focused in education, and she has worked on two continents. Her focus is quite simple connecting the University of San Diego's students and alumni to exciting professional opportunities. Robin will be introducing today's featured speaker and facilitating the interview before we launch into breakout rooms um, and then give space for Q&A. Robin, take it away. Thank you, Kara. Um, I am so excited about tonight's event. Um, I love uh, innovation, entrepreneurship, and it is with um, just huge excitement and a lot of um, admiration for Felina Hansen, who is going to be our speaker and having the moment to introduce you to her. Felina, you can join me. Welcome. Thank you. I feel like I'm stepping out from the curtain here. <laughs> <laughs> We've unveiled you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, I am absolutely thrilled to have you here tonight. And I hope you'll be okay if I read your bio, which so inspired me. And I hope all of you, normally I wouldn't read something to all of you, but I think when you hear her background, um, you'll bear with me. Listen carefully. She's pretty amazing. We're pretty fortunate to have this Torero with us tonight. As a non-repentant rebel and self-admitted rules breaker, Felina started her first business at age eight traveled Western Europe alone and can often be seen inciting pop-up dance parties on the streets of San Diego. Is that true? Yeah. Oh my goodness, love it. <laughs> a life-threatening car accident at age 22 caused her to take stock of her life, reevaluate her direction and set goals for herself. Felina's early career in the fast-paced technology industry resulted in three layoffs at the age of 30. Also at 30, she faced a failed marriage and business, which caused her to, again, reevaluate her life's past. Never one to dwell on what has happened to her, but to always shift her focus forward, she eventually launched Hera Hub with a vision to support over 20,000 women with the launch and growth of their business all over the world. After running a marketing strategy business out of her home for eight years, Hera Hub founder Felina Hansen knew she had to find a cost-effective, flexible place where she could escape the isolation and daily distractions. Distractions. She was excited to stumble on the concept of co-working and shared office space, but found most of the existing spaces were designed uh, for other aud audiences. Given she was dedicated to serving entrepreneurial women through leadership in organizations like Ladies Who Lunch, she began exploring what it would take to start a shared workspace focused on serving women-owned businesses. After much research, she came up with the idea of building a work and meeting space where enterprising women could connect and collaborate in a spa-inspired setting. That's true. Through. It's amazing. She launched her first Hera Hub in August 2011 and has been growing by leaps and bounds ever since. A, that blows me away. And B, I think how ironic, given what we've been living through since about January, February, March-ish. Yeah. Any comments before I launch into peppering you with questions? Because that's amazing, the coincidence of what you were building then and how timely and needed so many aspects of that are, especially when you think about today. 
Yeah, especially since most of us are forced to <laughs> work at home or study at home or whatever yeah. it is, do everything at home. And yeah. you know, we certainly want to be safe and we, we are safe, but we also recognize the fact that we need balance in our life and we need sense of community. And so um, we have been a rock for a lot of our members for the last six months. Um, yeah. Obviously, again, doing everything safely, but I talk to so many people that are like, I, I can't do this. I am going nuts. <laughs> you know, yeah. the mental health aspect of this is, is a big concern as well. Yeah. Do you have a crystal ball? How could you have ever envisioned in 2011? Good Lord, right? I mean, you've, I mean, you've just in that phrase touched on so many of the key things we're grappling with right now. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, you're right. <laughs> Absolutely. None of us yeah. could have predicted this. I'm sure someone did, but yeah, I that's incredible. So, we're learning and, and pivoting, or as one of my members says, instead of pivoting, because, you know, everybody uses that word in, in yep. you know, startups, we're pirouetting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. I like that. Ooh. Yeah. So talk to me about your current state as a leader, kind of where you're at as an entrepreneur. Give our audience kind of a, kind of a um, state of affairs of where you're at right now. Yeah, um, it's been an interesting six months. I mean, uh, so we're in the co-working space segment. Everybody, I'm sure, has heard of WeWork. Um, hopefully, has been to a co-working space, so understands the parameters, which is supporting folks. Uh, we like to say sometimes uh, working alone together. Mm -hmm. Typically, our members uh, a lot of times are solopreneurs. They may have small teams, but they may be distributed mm -hmm. and they seek a sense of community and connection because launching and growing a business is freaking hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, you need to have trusted resources. You need to have that sense of community to be there and support you on those days where you say, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Um, and so we do that in a physical workspace and a community. We've, of course, like everyone, uh, taken that community online, but still offer that in-person space. I mean, today, just today, I had uh, six of our members here, one of which who had her son, who's nine years old. He was doing distance learning in one room. She was interviewing. She owns a company called um, Seniors Helping Seniors. She does senior home care. And so she's interviewing in the conference room. Her son's working next door in the meeting room. You know, she's juggling everything. And so um, we're proud to be able to still offer people a space where they can, they can get away, frankly, and, and do the things they need to do for their business. Lena, not kind of just to take a step back and maybe I should have asked this earlier. Imagine that we have people in the audience that have never been to Hera Hub, have never been to a shared workspace. Sure. What does that look and feel like? And who are the kind of people that, that gravitate towards that, that know they need that, that kind of space? Yeah, so we primarily serve entrepreneurs, but we also now have some folks who uh, I call them corporate refugees who have been <laughs> displaced from their corporate office. Um, but primarily the folks, we are female focused, but not exclusive to women. We, we do have some, some gentlemen members as well. Um, so it, it is gender inclusive, but female focused. Um, and that's partially because we are building and have built over the last nine years a environment where we want all our members to be able to say, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, I need help, and to be open and vulnerable around those mm -hmm. conversations. Um, and, and you need to be in a safe space to do that. Those are not easy things to say. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, we're taught to, you know, this irony of the whole peacock, right? And, and Hera, and that was yeah. the male peacock feather was Hera symbol and all that. You know, this, this idea that you have to like puff up like a, a peacock to, you know, I got this, I know what I'm doing. Um, but a lot of times we don't in business, frankly. Yeah, business is challenging. And I've been an entrepreneur now for 16 years. Well, but to your point in my intro, since, my, since I was eight in, in some regards, but <laughs> the way, you know, I've been running these last two companies for 16 years and, it, you know, it is... As an entrepreneur, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You never have it all figured out. I mean, you are always, always, always changing and growing, which is exciting. That's why I love entrepreneurship. I absolutely, Robin, 
love to say that I am proudly unemployable. <laughs> Seriously, no joke. And I also like to say, if you know how to start a business, you will never be unemployed. Um, so this, the skills of entrepreneurship and how to start and grow a business are just invaluable, regardless of whether you're an entrepreneur or not. So the state of affairs <laughs> is, you know, we've, We've learned so much over the last six months. It has changed our business and probably forever will change our business. Mm -hmm. um, but I do see light at the end of the tunnel. People mm -hmm. are getting tired. They're getting tired of being cooped up in their house all day, every day and giving them a safe option. Even college students, we've got some students that are coming in as well. We want to support uh, college students. Um, I have scholarship programs, I have trade memberships, I have all kinds of things to support students because I get it, it especially if you thought you were going to, you know, trek across the U.S. and mm -hmm. go to school and now you're like still stuck at home. God bless. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine what uh, students are going through now. So um, we try to help as much as we can in, in, in all segments, so to speak, in creating that, that community. Kalina, that's an, a great segue. What trends are you seeing in the startup community at the moment, whether that's San Diego specific or just US global at large? Are you seeing some, some common threads, some common trends? Yeah, so a couple things. I'm on the board for Startup San Diego um, and huge plug to Startup San Diego. I can throw it in the chat in a little bit when we're done chatting. Um, they are launching Startup Month starting tomorrow. Tickets oh. are only $100 for the entire month. Oh, wow. um, and I can throw a disc $30 discount code in there, but it's so much opportunity to connect with the startup community here in San Diego. It is the best deal in town, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Panel events, networking, keynotes all month long. Um, so with that and being part of Startup San Diego, formerly Startup Week, <laughs> now expanded because it's virtual to Startup Month, some of those trends are um, just accessibility. It is, I'm not saying it's easy to start a business because it's not, but, but technically it's easy to start a business. I mean, you can put up a Shopify account in, you know, an hour and be in business, frankly. Right. Right. You know, the tools that are at your, your disposal are just incredible. And, and the opportunity then to market it, um, especially if you already have some connections in a network, is, mm -hmm. is cheap and easy, frankly. Mm -hmm. So I always encourage folks, you know, try something. Even if you don't know what type of business you want to start, just try something. Mm -hmm. I had a student who wanted to start a business. I, I teach through the Women's Business Center, and she wasn't quite sure what she wanted to do, so she just started importing knives like kitchen knives just to like play with it she set up a shopify account created a brand and you know she's just using it as what she calls her kind of internship of, of entrepreneurship just playing and seeing and and that's just it's the best way to learn is just get in there and do it so imagine you've got people in the audience that go oh my gosh i'm all over this i'm drinking your kool-aid i'd love to start something what are a couple of practical steps a newbie could take or I, I guess another question to that even someone who's seasoned out there what are things they should be mindful of when starting a business yeah i mean the number one principle is know your customer and know their needs mm -hmm. um, that's the biggest mistake i see entrepreneurs make is they'll come up with a business idea and they haven't really fleshed out if there's even a need in the market mm -hmm. um and a lot of times they'll do some you know primary research and go talk to customers and, you know, people, oh, that's a great idea. I love it. Uh, but are they willing to pay for it? And what are they willing to pay for it? I mean, I went through that with Hera Hub a little bit. Everybody talked, oh my gosh, that's so brilliant. I love it. But when I came to uh, hand me your credit card and start paying me $200 a month recurring, um, you know, those are different stories, so to speak. Yeah. So really understand the need in the market. And I always say, understand the gaps. You know, there's so much opportunity with COVID, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I know we're frustrated. I know people are panicked on a number of levels, including, you know, politics, frankly, right now, just being candid, right? I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now. Yeah. 
But when there's uncertainty and when there's big change, there's opportunity, there's gaps, right? Mm -hmm. And so find those gaps. Don't be a me too. Find what the needs are in the market and who's not filling those. I mean, that's to some extent what I did with Hera Hub. It was, mm -hmm. there were a handful of co-working spaces at the time. Uh, WeWork started the same year I started, obviously grown <laughs> significantly more than I have. We've only grown to eight locations. Mm -hmm. Um, but they've also lost billions of dollars and I have not. So, um, <laughs> but, you know, looking at the market and yeah, there's tons of business centers out there and this concept's been around for a while, but not in the sense of really mm -hmm. focused on community first and space second and not mm -hmm. for women. So we really pioneered that segment um, and address the need and, and mm. continue to address that need. Mm. So that's my, my biggest piece of advice is just mm. really understand the market, the gap, the needs, mm -hmm. and then work backwards from there. Don't come up with an idea. I think there needs to be an app for this. Well, why does there need to be an app for this? Is there really a need and are people actually going to, can you monetize it? Will they actually pay for it? Felina, not to be indiscreet, what was one thing that helped you? You you made that comment that, you know, here you have this great idea, amazing, and then getting those early adopters to jump on. What, what was the one thing that seemed to push you from, like, what brought those early adopters in? Was there one, and how did you figure that out? Were you going out talking to other entrepreneurs, kind of doing some informal focus groups or was there one thing that made you go, ah, that's it? Yeah, it, a combination of things certainly, but yes, uh, I mean, go talk to everybody. Like you have to be so flippin' excited mm -hmm. about your idea. You've gotta be so passionate about it that you want to tell everybody. And, and that engagement and excitement will frankly help sell it. People wanna mm -hmm. be part of something where people are passionate and, and engaged and excited. People want to be part of that, especially in times like this. So get excited, get passionate, get behind your own idea and tell the world. I run into this all the time with new entrepreneurs. Like, I'm afraid somebody's going to steal my idea. And I'm like, people are too stinking busy to steal your idea. They just are, right? I mean, Granted, if you have some, you know, patented <laughs> pharmaceutical that, uh, you know, you really have to keep top secret, then fine. But 99% of our ideas are not going to be patent <laughs> uh, qualified. So really just get out there and tell the world and, and really, really get behind your idea and get very, very excited about it. So that's what I did. I told everybody you know, I had something that was different. It was filling a gap and people talk when they're excited about something mm -hmm. and I'm just always listening. I mean, I have, I have the advantage of I'm super close to my customers, right? I'm not selling a product online through a website where I don't get to see my customers. My customers are in front of me every single day, my members, mm -hmm. and I'm constantly asking them, what do you need? How can we help you? How can we support you? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then we create programs or events or, or things mm -hmm. to fill those needs. Um, and it, it, I, obviously what I'm saying sounds so basic and it, it, it really is, but I think a lot of people just get away from that um, a lot of times when they're launching a business. And I appreciate hearing that from you because I've often observed or read that sometimes CEOs, the kind of the danger, because there's high level things you're focused on, you can lose touch with the, the business basics, the customers, and then you kind of lose the heart. I hear that you're making an effort, an intentional effort to stay in touch kind of with that, that base, the, the roots really, which is impressive, super impressive, because I'm sure you're stretched in a million directions too. Yeah, but that's the most important thing. You don't have a business if you're not serving your customers. Sure. I don't know. And I, I think, you know, to that extent, people do kind of sometimes get so far away from the original idea and so wrapped up into other things, fundraising or hiring or whatever it might be, um, that, they, that they just, they forget about it and they lose touch. I don't aspire to build a business that's going to do that. I mean, we grew to eight locations. We grew through a licensing model. You know, I, I took on a little bit of angel investment um, from a woman that you know. <laughs> she invested about two years into the business to help us 
you know, scale the business, but in a, a smart way. I never aspired to, you know, I aspired to support a lot of women in, in launching their business, but never aspired to have 20, you know, thousand locations or something like that. That's not the business I'm in. So um, just, yeah, getting, getting back and always to kind of the core of your why, um, Simon Sinek, know your why, <laughs> um, and, and, and come back to that and, um, you know, and build a great team. I'm, that's not my strong suit. I've done okay over the years, um, but you hear it all the time. Surround yourself with awesome people um, who are smarter than you, of course, <laughs> um, which is not an easy thing to do. So I'm always learning. <laughs> I appreciate your transparency. I'm going to ask you one last question because I have a feeling that I am standing in the way of people who are dying to ask their questions and break into our groups. I'm going to switch gears. What was your favorite memory or what is your favorite memory when you think of your time at USD? Great question. Um, <laughs> Being a Torero. Yes. Um, you know, I think, gosh, so many things. Mm -hmm. um, eating scones at the, <laughs> what was it called? The little cafe, no, I'm kidding. Um, you know, I think it was at the time, and I don't know how, how big the class sizes are now, but just really being so intimate, I guess, with uh, professors and classmates. Um, I just, I really felt like I knew everybody and there was such a level of engagement on campus. Mm -hmm. Um, that I, I really, you know, as I look back, I appreciate that. I did my MBA at a, a state school. I, mm -hmm. when I was living in LA, I just mm -hmm. kind of picked the closest school that I could commute to after work kind of thing. And, you know, much larger class sizes, even though it was a master's level program and just, just a different level of mm -hmm. engagement. Mm -hmm. so. Your favorite class? Uh, probably international business. Mm -hmm. I was, mm -hmm. I love to travel. I, I checked off about 27 countries and I have another about 40 on my list. Um, and so I uh, just have always been intrigued by what, what the rest of the world thinks and does. Um, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I love it. And one last question, your favorite spot on campus, since we're all missing being on campus so much, what was your favorite spot? I know, right? Um, well, it has changed a tiny bit. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure if anyone's been around for a little while, the fact that you used to be able to drive through the center of campus. Don't people, tell people. I know, I know. Like cruising down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, favorite spot on campus. Um, yeah, at the library. I just oh. love, used to love to go in. Harry Potter room? Beautiful, probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just going like downstairs and like mm -hmm. nestling myself in. So. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you. On that note, I can't wait for us to break into groups, small groups. Uh, Felina has agreed to stay with us. So this is, this is when we regard to startup week. Yeah. Like a start of month. Start of month, yeah. <laughs> so I went to this thing called Startup Weekend way back in 2014. Yep. Back when they were their own thing. I think they're part of yep. Star Trek now. Yep. Um, one of the things that I love about that was that for those that aren't entrepreneurs, that they're able to bring stuff to it, but they don't have yep. their own ideas. Yep. They're able to collaborate with those that have ideas, and then there's mentors there to guide them to take that into a business. Is there something like that to start a month to consider to just open yeah. up for people? Yeah, Startup Weekend is unique to your point uh, where you get together in teams, you pitch, then you work on an idea, and then you pitch at the end. I've judged quite a few of those. Um, startup Month will offer much of the same in regards to connection and sense of community and op opportunity to collaborate and pitch as well. So, so yes, they're, they are different, you know, different entities, but there will be a lot of similarities. I, if you are at all interested in starting a business now or in the future, I cannot recommend it enough. It's, it's an incredible, incredible organization and they're, you know, we'll see, they start tomorrow. I wasn't on the planning committee, I'm on the board. So um, I'm excited. I'll be there tomorrow night for the kickoff. So it, it's, I, I can't, I mean, again, I drop my email in the chat, send me an email and I'll send you the promo code for 30 bucks off. I guarantee you, you will get 
80 times your value for 70 bucks. <laughs> do I, just, just to be clear, I can just show up and join a team or do I have to bring a team? Uh, no, so there, there's a variety of events. I encourage you to go to the site, um, startupsd.org, and then click on Startup Month. Um, there will be a variety of things, but it's not going to be exactly like uh, Startup Weekend. Those are different organizations okay. uh, and, and slightly different. But a lot of the benefits that you spoke of, um, you'll be able to get through Startup Month. Um, Feline, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, there was a, um, a stark statistic that I read about earlier um, today from Sheryl Sandberg, um, who said that about one fourth of women in corporate America are um, going to have to downsize their careers because of the multiple roles and dual roles that they've been pulled into post COVID. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, as such a successful business, female business leader, how you're navigating through this and helping support your teams to navigate through this period. Yeah, it, it's it's tough. I mean, I, I don't have small kids at home, so I don't, I can't even imagine what parents are going through right now trying to run their business or you know, <laughs> fulfill their job at the same time, homeschooling. Um, so we, we've offered our members, they can bring their children in. Um, we've put them all together. We, we do what we call sub hubs, so affinity groups within our community. So we have a distance learning task force where we've connected all the folks that have children who are distance learning to support each other and create programs, after school programs like tennis clinics and, Oh, we've got all kinds of awesome ideas floating around right now. So we act as the platform basically to bring people together. And, and that's, so that's how we serve them. That sounds amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great question, Dee. I think we have another question. Juan Pablo Galindo, he raised his hand. Perfect. Hi, thank you very much for uh, the, the introduction and everything. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, I am trying to start a new business and I would like to advertise online. Do you have any uh, recommendation on where to advertise? Yeah, so I need two, two pieces of information to give you advice. Number one, who's the target customer? Because that's going to, where you advertise is going to be vastly different. Is it going to be TikTok or is it going to be Facebook? Uh, and then what's the concept? Can you describe those real brief? I think because we're getting short on time. <laughs> yes, it's basically online classes, especially in extracurricular activities. Uh, so right now that it's everything online is going to be faster, is, is easier, sorry, is going to be uh, instruments and languages, especially. Okay. Um, my target group at the beginning is probably people under, I don't know, 25 years old, uh, something around that section, but it's, it's basically for everyone. Okay, so I'm just not to correct you, Juan, but uh, don't ever say your product's for everybody. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I get that it could be because it's an online class, but you want to be very specific. It doesn't mean you're going to turn somebody away if they show up and they're not that demographic, but you absolutely 100% be able to, to speak to a certain demographic, a certain generation, if you will. Um, so Facebook is not going to be the answer because Facebook is now called mom book, right? So <laughs> our grandma book. Um, <laughs> so yeah, obviously Instagram is going to be extremely important, uh, in this, uh, could be TikTok. Um, lots of folks are playing around with advertising on TikTok, especially if they're language classes, there could be all kinds of fun things that you do there. Um, so that's my, my quick answer is probably the two platforms I would focus on. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Felina. Fantastic advice. And then do we have any more kind of time? I think we have for, for one final question. I have one quick comment and I couldn't find the little sure. hand raised. <laughs> Dina. Hi, Felina. Hi, good to see you. Um, Good to see you. Hey, I just I just thought it was really interesting and, and fabulous how you kind of as you didn't say pivot, you curtsy, but you just mentioned pirouette. Well, you can pirouette. Okay, <laughs> pirouette. The pirouette. You know, <laughs> to take from the the people that are part of Hera Hub and saying, hey, you know what, we're gonna have give a space for your children to do their online work or or to go and do tennis or something in kind of involve the whole family unit because of what we're going through. I think that's really fabulous how you 
pirouetted into that. So, <laughs> Thank you. Good on you. I appreciate that. Definitely. Um, and I'll, I'll say a final plug too. I drop my email in the chat. Please feel free to connect with me, email me, find me on LinkedIn, find me on whatever platform. Um, I'm not huge on TikTok yet, but I do have a profile there. Um, mostly dogs dancing. Um, but in all seriousness, I, I want to help college students. So if you're here in San Diego and you're stuck at home and you want a place to come and work, reach out to me. Um, again, we're gender inclusive. If you enjoy a spa inspired workspace, all are welcome. <laughs> so feel free to, to ping me. Thank you so much, Felina. Thank you for your words of wisdom, insights. It's been a really, really valuable, impactful evening. Thank you for having me. Felina, so thank I'll, you. And I'll turn that over to Kara now to close us up for the night. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate you, Felina. Um, I was saying earlier, my goodness, it's been years since we actually did an in-person alumni event at Hera Hub. And my goodness, can we get back there already? Um, <laughs> As soon as we get the green light to do start doing events, you better watch out. I'll be reaching out to you. <laughs> um, thank you so much. We're so proud to have you as part of our alumni family. Thank you for the students who joined us um, showing initiative in this way um, by connecting with our alumni community before you walk across the stage to grab your diploma is a um, is really impressive. Continue to do it. Continue to start to uh, take advantage and give back to the USD network um, now while you're still a student. This is awesome. Um, a recording of this will be available on the Alumni Association's YouTube next week after I have a chance to do some editing on it. Uh, and these are some upcoming events. Uh, a few of them are CRP um, or do have CRP credit associated with them for our students, including tomorrow's Alumni Spotlight. Adama Iwu was actually featured on the 2017 Time uh, Person of the Year cover as part of the Me Too movement and the uh, issue called the Silence Breakers. She, I happened to go to school with her and she is a rock star. So she is really, really fantastic. I highly recommend if you're available tomorrow at 11 a.m. for half an hour to just check in with the Dhamma. And then we have these other upcoming events before we dive into um, the uh, all, in all caps and bold homecoming and family week activities mm -hmm. from Torero Tuesday to virtual Big Blue Bash. Um, so please check it out. And the date there on Big Blue Bash is wrong. It's actually on the 17th, my bad. Um, and then the Alumni Association does have some virtual offerings. Um, our tiny Torero store time podcast. So if any of you guys do have little children at home, new um, podcast recordings are released every Saturday. Our team mentoring platform, which is a shared um, uh, platform with career development, a great opportunity for you to sign up and connect with both fellow alumni and students. And then our alumni Zoom trips and interviews from USD's chats with Charles are our two interview series um, virtual. So uh, thank you guys so much uh, for spending your time with us. Felina, what a treat. Best part of my week for sure. <laughs> Thanks for having take, me. Take, take care, everyone. <laughs>